The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. Good morning, church. I hope you're having a blessed day. We are doing this little mini series on the new covenant. Yesterday, we talked about the book of Hebrews in chapter 10. Today, we're going to Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to be reading verses 8 to 10. There's three verses, 8, 9, 10, which is the most powerful verses in explaining the new covenant. This is the verses we quote all the time. And so we're going to take just a little bit of time today. You're going to realize as we go throughout this entire week, I'm going to be just repeating myself over and over and over and over because the truths that I'm explaining are the exact same truths over and over. We're, we're reading different sections and different verses, and different parts of the Bible, yet they all say the exact same thing. And it's understanding how many times it's referenced and mentioned that really will begin to deliver your heart. See, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God that you begin to learn and know what God says. See, Hosea 4 says it's the lack of knowledge that destroys you. And then the rejection of the knowledge you do learn that destroys you. But my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. What you don't know is killing you. What you don't know is giving the devil access to destroy you. So knowledge is very important. You know, people quote the verse saying, knowledge puffs up, love builds up. Because that's a, that's when you take knowledge to an argument. You, you're applying it wrong. There's nothing actually wrong with knowledge itself. There's nothing wrong. You need knowledge. You need the knowledge of God to receive promises of God. You need the knowledge of God to withstand the enemy. So knowledge is very important. It's very key in your Christian walk. And we need to have this knowledge. And so taking this week and just going through the new covenant and just going through all these places where God talks about the new covenant is, is very important. So Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let the word become wisdom revelation in the knowledge of your son. Spiritual seed sown producing in our body, mind, will, and emotion. Transforming us by the renewing of our mind, conforming us to the image of Christ, growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to read verses 8, 9, 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, this obviously sounds different than the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews yesterday was talking about the sacrifice aspect. There's no more sacrifice needed. We have access to God and we provoke each other to good works when we don't forsake the assembling. But Ephesians chapter 2 is one of the most quoted when it comes to grace and faith. And I just want to say a couple of things. The word by... B-Y indicates the object doing the action. When so it says by grace, it's saying that grace does the work. And then it says through, the word through indicates the conjoining or the conjunction between two things, meaning the connection between you and God is through faith. Faith is the vessel. Faith is the mechanism. Faith is the way we appropriate what grace does. Listen, faith does not do the work. So we, we, we talk about the faith movement. I believe the word of faith movement was powerful and how to, how to walk in faith and how to move in faith. 
but faith doesn't actually do the work. Faith receives what grace already did. See, God did it by grace. Grace is the the power part that does the work. Faith is what receives what God has already done. Those are two very powerful truths. Faith has a power in it in the way it works. But when it comes to salvation and it comes to the new covenant and it comes to the things that we receive, healing, deliverance, power, miracles, prosperity, all of the things given inside of the new covenant by grace, grace did the work. What God has already done, that is the power part that did the work so that we only receive it by faith. That's why it says, not of works. It can be no more clear than that in the Bible. I mean, not of works. You receive it by faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Because we're going to read this other passage later, so I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But if it's of grace, then it's no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. If it's of works, it's not of grace. Otherwise, works is no more works. Meaning that it's either grace or it's works. You either earn it or you receive it freely. One of the two. See, if you go and work a job, you deserve a check. You deserve a payment. But if you're not working and you still receive that check, that's what's called grace. Because it's given freely. It's, it's The work was not done by you. You just received a work done by somebody else. See, grace is what does the work. Well, that grace is what Jesus did on the cross. He did the work. We receive what he has already done. So there's still a work taking place. It's just the work is not yours. The work was his. I, I give this example. If you are a child in a house and your parents go to work, earn money, buy groceries, and put it in the house, you get to eat the food. You didn't work to earn that food. You're just a part of the house. You get to eat it. You didn't work for it, but it doesn't mean that that food was free. That food still had to be earned. Well, somebody had to go to work and earn it. Somebody had to go to work and earn the money to pay for the food. The same way the things of the new covenant, salvation, healing, deliverance, prosperity, power, all of those things were not free. There was a work that was needed to pay for those things, but the work was paid for by Jesus. Jesus paid the price that you could not pay. He did the work. That's, that's the part of grace that you need to understand. Grace, the power of God, it was by that work, the work of grace, which is Jesus doing it and then God giving it to you by faith. You just have to reach out and appropriate it, receive it, take part of it. And it's not of your own works. But it's so powerful that the very next word, not the very next word, the very next verse, gives us a powerful truth that we were made by God, created in him to do good works. So it's not that we don't receive it by works, not of works, but God ordained that we should do good works. You say, well, how do you reconcile those truths? If you're not receiving it by works, but you're supposed to do works, how do you make those two things reconcile? It's very simple. Jesus did a work to earn the things of God when he went to the cross. That's the grace. And then God gave it to you freely by faith. You received it by faith. And then because we receive these things by faith freely, not of our own works, it compels us to do good things because of that. See, that grace of God will teach us. I keep quoting Titus. We're going to get there at the end of the week. But grace actually will compel you to do good works. So I do things. I, I, I said this last night in a church. I evangelize. I preach. I 
give offerings and all those things. I do good things, but I do good things not because I'm trying to earn it from God. It's not of works. I can't earn the things of God. I received them freely by faith. I can't boast because I can't work for it, but I still do works. It's the fact that the works are not earning it. The works are a response to what I receive freely. If I don't work a job to earn the money, but somebody gives me the money anyway, and that's a free gift, grace, somebody earned it, somebody gave it, I receive it by faith. When I receive that, the overflowing gratitude and compassion and thankfulness and, and all of that response that's coming forth out of me because you just gave me something, it compels me to do good things. I want to respond doing good things because of the overflowing gratitude of the fact somebody else paid for it and then just gave it to me freely. That is the new covenant. See, the old covenant said you have to work to earn it, and it was due to you because of your work. In the new covenant, God said, I paid the price, I did the work, and I give it to you freely, and you see this, I don't deserve it, I didn't earn it, yet you still gave it. That overflowing compassion back to God and gratitude back to God compels me to do good works. And this is this big argument in the church. Well, you got to do good works, but it's by great. And, and people have a hard time reconciling these two things. It's just a process. God did a work and it's done by grace. God did the work, gave it to you by faith, just receiving it. You receive the things of God. Faith is what receives through faith, receives what God did by grace. And now that I receive it, it now compels me to do good things. My good things are not earning it. I already received it before I did good things. See, God doesn't want you doing works first, thinking that it earns from God. You cannot actually do that because Christ already did the work. He did the work and gave it to you freely before you ever responded. What you need to understand, here's a, just a simple phrase. God does not respond to you. You respond to God. I receive freely through faith what you did by grace, and then it causes me to live holy. It causes me to do good works because of an overflowing gratitude of what you already did by grace that I receive through faith that compels me to do good works. I know I keep repeating a lot of these things over and over, but if you just hear it enough times, you'll start to get the grasp of what is truly the new covenant. Father, bless these people in Jesus' name. I give you all the glory. Amen and amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. Have a great day. Like, follow, share, drop us a comment, and we will see you tomorrow. The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow. Oh, the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. The sun's not worried about the winter.